Hey everybody, it's Sultan Shinola here coming to you with thoughts for the weekend for this Friday, June 8, 2012. Well, starting off, uh, we'll just get right into it. Uh, the unemployment claims for the week. Um, reporting all over the news how the you know claims went down for the first time in months. Well, yeah, they go down if you keep revising the prior weeks up, up, and up. You know, as we look at it, uh, I'll show you over here. So you have the number here shown as 377, yeah, 377,000 people as being uh, reported seeking unemployment insurance claims for the week. And that's a decrease of 12,000 from the prior prior week of uh, 389,000, which was revised up 6,000 from what was actually reported last week. <laughs> so, as you see uh, in this column over here, this is the what this is the revision that they do to the prior week every single week. So as you can see, um, as long as I've been tracking this from uh, December, I just don't care to go back further than that at this point because I just, to make my point here, how every single week this year, they always revise the prior week up. Sometimes by a little, sometimes by a lot, but it always goes up. And that allows them to monkey with the, the emotions, if you will, of people by claiming that, oh, the insurance claims dropped, you know, 12,000 this week. Isn't everything great? Well, it's 12,000 if you increase the prior week by 6,000. It, it's just amazing how the reported change fluctuates so much when in actuality they've just been incrementally increasing uh, the number of people filing for claims. And a lot of this, I think, is just political, you know, and we may never know exactly why or where we at, we're at in this country because there's all kinds of other issues as far as reporting from the states and you can't get the real information coming out of the politicians so the economy is not looking good and we'll just kind of from there we'll move right into the next story um, I caught this over on Zero Hedge last week and I thought I was going to add it to the report last week but this was put out by Raul Paul who is um, he was the founder of Global Macro Investor uh, he also worked for Goldman Sachs so he, he's been around. He's been uh, out there playing with the big boys and he was a big boy himself for a while. But now he's just since 2004, he's been sitting back and watching what's been happening. And he's kind of calling that the, the end is near. Uh, one of the things he says is that uh, within the next you know year and a half, that the entire monetary system in the world, the fiat currency, everything, is going to crash and come undone that it's going to be very difficult. So uh, if you want to check out, there's this amazing um, slideshow that he did. And I'll have a link down at the bottom. It's called The End Game. And he basically walks through why the world's fiat currency system is about to go under. Uh, it talks about the global um, debt held by the 10 richest nations in, on the planet. How there are, between the 10, uh, richest countries in the world there are 70 trillion dollars in debt they are 70 trillion dollars in debt which of that 70 trillion there are 700 trillion dollars in derivatives sitting out there waiting waiting to be called to be you know this things are gonna pop the, you can't keep going the way we're going over here you see um, percentage of US population employed how this is, goes back to 1948 there's a nice head and shoulders pattern right there. Um, it's not looking good. Because we're way down where we need to be as far as the population and its employment. Um, here's looking at the UK industrial production, which is way down. EU industrial output heading down still. All these things happening and you know we never have come out of the prior recession and we're about to head into another recession by there's many economists out there now saying that we are heading to it towards another recession which doesn't bode well for us because generally when you get a recession recession is supposed to go like this at least there was a period of increased GDP growth increased prosperity in between there so that it lessens the blow of the second recession that hits but we haven't had that in the world so generally what happens um, is we see here his fact that uh, this will be the lowest cyclical peak in the GDP growth in G7 history here we see a uh, total debt to GDP ratio by country and there's the US you know here's our debt to GDP where we're up to just over 325 
uh, billion. It's not looking good. I mean, you got the UK, Japan, China that are actually, in, well, in Spain, doing worse than us. But all these countries, we know the problems going on with Italy. I haven't heard too much about South Korea. China seems like they're always reporting good things over there, but uh, we know that they're out there building ghost cities. And uh, when you're building cities that nobody lives in, and I mean, you can't just keep producing and building and creating new things that nobody's using. Uh, eventually, you just created a big pile of goods that are never going to get used, never going to be sold, and you're looking for really, really hard times down the road. So what he says is coming, <laughs> sovereign defaults. Uh, you're going to see it in the EU. Uh, I think Greece might lead it off, even though the, you know, the markets have been up the last couple days because, well, maybe not this morning, but the last two days prior, across Europe and the U.S. because everybody thinks that the European Union is going to bail out all these countries. They're going to figure it out. Well, there's no money out there. I mean, is the U.S. going to step in and lend them money? Because where are we getting the money to bail them out? IMF doesn't have the money. The World Bank doesn't have the money. They want the U.S. to contribute more money towards it because as they say, well, if the U.S. doesn't want to go down also, then it's going to have to keep the EU propped up because if the EU goes down, the U.S. goes down. It's like, you know what? We're all going down. It doesn't matter who we are. There's just, there's no money. The game is over. The gig is up. This thing's going to crash. It's going to burn. You need to make sure you get yourself prepared for it. Bad enough of that kind of news. Let's move on to happier things, shall we? Because sometimes it just gets depressing, right? So let's see. There's some great news out there. The Soviet Union has launched another ICBM. This time they launched it in southern Russia. And this was seen as far south as Israel. There's some, uh, I'll have a link to the video as well from YouTube uh, showing the, the missile as it went across the sky. And apparently it's another ICBM, a new one that they've created to help, you know, counteract the U.S. missile shield, the NATO missile shield in uh, Europe to protect against, you know, missiles from Iran. And the Soviet Union, or I'm sorry, the Russian government is, you know, once again beating the war drums, just like the Cold War times all over again, where it's just going to create another arms race, except they're the only ones building arms while we destroy our arms and go further and further into debt. So I think we're going to be the ones collapsing at this point. As if we didn't have enough things to worry about with uh, Russia and ICBMs, we have all in the news the last couple weeks, all these uh, zombies out there running around, chewing people's faces off, eating bodies, eating brains. It's getting bad. So you think, well, I, I can get myself protected, no problem. Unfortunately, the company out there making the zombie bullets, Hornady, they're, uh, they've seen some really high demand for their zombie killers. Yeah, that's right. The uh, Zombie Max bullets by Hornady getting hard to find and they're in extremely high demand right now because people are afraid with all these stories of uh, people going around eating each other, all the cannibalism, that's actually some zombie takeover of the world that started by, I don't know, who do you think it started by? Who do you think is causing all these people to start eating each other? The government had to come out and say actually that there is no known diseases that would cause such a thing to cause people to go around eating each other. So. I think maybe it's Hornady. I think they're behind it. I think they've released whatever this disease is that's going around causing people to get sick and turn into zombies just so they could sell their bullets. What do you think? Check out the video from their, uh, their ad campaign. It's pretty cool. Now, as some of you know, you've been following me that uh, a couple weeks ago, last week, whenever that was, two weeks ago, maybe it's only been one week. I don't know. It seems like two put out a couple of videos regarding Ron Paul and I titled the one the failure of the man not the movement and as you know I caught a lot of flack from a lot of people uh, even some of you who followed me a long time weren't too pleased with me saying that Ron Paul was a failure and I'll admit maybe I came across gave the wrong impression when I said that failure of the man what I was pointing out which I thought was obvious in the video that it was more of a failure of his run for president and how it just proves that one man can't solve everything rather than him actually just being a failure in life. He's done a wonderful job with the uh, the movement, the Ron Paul Revolution, getting people um, 
focused on government and changing their situation, getting a better uh, life for everybody under you know freedom and liberty. And that movement will continue. I found it interesting because there was an article that came out yesterday showing that, uh, or last night, it's all over the place now. You can see it that, uh, and it was kind of talked about. Corey talked about it. How it was it Corey or Raw Dog? You know, we talked about how um, Rand Paul, Ron Paul's son, talked really favorably of Mitt Romney. Well, he came out yesterday, late last night, and endorsed Mitt Romney. So, I think it was Corey that was saying that people need to, when that happens, to apologize. The rabid slothering hordes of uh, the Paulistas, the ones who are the attack dogs that attack any of us who say anything possibly construed as negative about Ron Paul. I think most of us believe that the movement is what it was all about. Well, here I got a letter from Ron Paul saying that the strategy all along was just to get enough delegates to make a difference. And the plan is now that he's got 400, or he's hoping for 500 supporters on the floor of the convention, you know, 20% of all delegates to be able to put pressure on Mitt Romney and the rest of the GOP to focus on the things that the Ron Paul Revolution stands behind. And I think that with Rand Paul throwing his endorsement out there for Romney, it shows that, you know, the GOP, or I don't know about the GOP, Mitt Romney claims that he's going to fight to be this uh, extreme conservative constitutionalist. It was all about getting just enough delegates to put enough pressure on the convention so that the focus is on shrinking the size of government, returning personal liberties and freedoms to people. You know, I thought it was funny because I talked a lot about how mean-spirited and how ridiculous the attacks coming from some of the Ron Paul supporters were. I think down here is where it says uh, that we all need to stand up for what we believe in, but right there is the key, be respectful. And just because somebody disagrees with you doesn't mean you go on the absolute nuclear attack and try to destroy people that might disagree. You have to be respectful. If you want your point to be taken seriously, you have to be respectful in how you present your, your views and your ideas. No one's going to listen to you or take you seriously. It's just going to anger them more and probably turn them against you. It's very important that you be respectful if we want this movement to continue and keep the revolution going and see what we can if we can change it from the inside. Otherwise, just step back and let this thing burn down and pick up the pieces later. You know, reality sometimes is not a cool thing, and the last story I wanted to cover real quick was about uh, high school teacher David McCullough Jr. His father was a, was a known historian, uh, David McCullough. He uh, gave the commencement address at the high school that he's a teacher at, and it kind of ticked off a lot of the parents what he had to say. And what's funny is I'll have a link to the story, but then also a link to the uh, full text of his speech. He basically is tired of, you know, propping these kids up, tell them how wonderful they are and how special they are and how they're going to change the world. And he basically started off with, you're not special, you're not exceptional. And he basically just laid into them and let them know exactly where things are in this world and what they need to do. And all the problems that have been caused in their lives because they've been pampered too much and they haven't been allowed to suffer and get make it through their mistakes on their own. Anyway, I thought it was a pretty good, good story and uh, more and more people are starting to stand up and recognize it and speak the truth. No matter how much people hate it, you know, parents don't like to hear their kids be told they're failures and you know, because you're all superstars. You all deserve that trophy in your soccer match even though you lost every game of the season. Yay! No. You need to pick yourself up and try to do your best. Stop being told that you're a superstar and a super athlete and that nobody can stop you, nobody can tell you no, when in fact everyone can tell you no. Everybody's going to stomp all over you once you get out into the real world. That's all I've got for the weekend. Remember to try to relax and enjoy some time with your family and friends. Try not to uh, worry about too many things in the world. You know, you've got all week to worry about that stuff. Make sure you got your preps in order. You know, that, uh, we got some hard times coming down the road, I believe. But uh, anyway, stay focused, stay true, and uh, that's all I've got. SOS out.